So this is just a short concept bite video for the Maths for Chemists course on standard deviation, one of our basic statistical techniques. So if I look at these two data sets, I can see that data set one has quite a, a narrow distribution and data set two has a much more broad distribution. But if I were to calculate the mean of each, they would both be the same. Therefore, we need to consider that my mean doesn't tell me enough information about a data set for me to fully understand it. Numerically, I have these two data sets here, one varying between 9 and 11 and the other between 9.8 and 10.2. The mean of each is 10.0, but the range is very, very different. So clearly, the average is an important metric, but we need to have something additional to tell us about the spread of data. If I just look at the distance points are above and below the mean, then I'll end up with something which sums to zero. If I instead square the sum of these parts, it doesn't equal zero. It get ris gets rid of all of the negative values which cancel out the positive ones because everything becomes a positive term. This sum of the squares is going to be an important step towards working towards the standard deviation. What we find is that data takes on a spread. No matter how well we measure something, there will always be a distribution of the data that is collected. Here I've just built a data set. These are all individual points that I've collected. And we can see that the further away from the average value that I am, the less likely that occurrence was. The closer I am to the, the mean, the more likely that occurrence was, the more often it happened. This type of distribution is what we would call a normal or a Gaussian distribution and is the distribution that we should be hoping for in any given set of data. Here I've shown the Gaussian distribution properly and I can see that I've marked the mean on clearly. Within one standard deviation, plus and minus of the mean, 68% of the population lies. If I go two standard deviations, I now have about 95% of my population. And within three standard deviations of my mean, I have 99.7% of my population. And here, showing the, two, the three standard deviations, you can just see them as tiny little tick marks just at the bottom of the distribution. Almost all of my data lies within three standard deviations. This is going to be a useful thing for us thinking about chemistry and data, and we can start to predict uncommon events, or further, we can start to work out whether we think data is um, faulty if there is an outlier in our data set. This comes up when we look at the outliers video, also available on this course. So the standard deviation always takes the same shape. The curve has the same shape, but as I increase my standard deviation for the same population, for the same number of data points, the top of the curve becomes lower and broader. As I increase my standard deviation, my spread of data is wider. So here I've just called my standard deviation A. But here I show a standard deviation with twice the value of the first set and with three times the value and finally four times the value. And you can see that as the standard deviation increases the breadth of my distribution increases as well. Calculating the standard deviation depends slightly on the data that we've collected. We have two different versions of the standard deviation. We have one that I'll call the standard deviation with the sim symbol sigma, and one that I'll refer to as a sample, sample standard deviation with the symbol s. Both of them are ba based on a variance. Variance is simply this sum of the difference between my values and my mean, squared, which I collected before. And I'm dividing this by, in the variance case, 1 over n, or in the sample variance, 1 over n minus 1. Variance has little 
practical use though, because if I think about a value having units, by the time I square the difference between the value and the mean, my units are now squared. So we tend to use the standard deviation, and I won't refer to variance any more than just simply on this slide. So I have the standard deviation with a sigma and the sample standard deviation with an s. And this is the square root of the sum of these um, differences between the values in the mean over n or n minus 1 respectively. The reason I care about this sample standard deviation is because if I've collected just a small amount of data then I don't know my mean perfectly and having this sample standard deviation it increases the standard deviation that I measure because it's basically saying I'm not 100% confident in the value of my mean. The sample standard deviation is exclusively the values we should be using in chemistry calculations. From now on, any time I refer to the standard deviation, I will almost certainly be referring to the sample standard deviation with the symbol S. Here we have the spread of data from a data set which I've used before but is here in full. I've used the initial rate of a reaction to um, determine the mean, the average initial rate of reaction from five different experiments. And so my mean value is 1.32 times 10 to the minus 4 to the appropriate number of significant figures. If I then calculate my sample standard deviation for each of these values within my data set, then I go some way towards being able to calculate the sample standard deviation. For clarity, I've missed out the multiplier and the units on the table, but it they shouldn't be forgotten at the end of the calculation. Taking each value in turn and taking away the mean and squaring this value gives me the values in the table, which if I sum gives me this value of 29.9 times 10 to the minus 3. Simply dropping this into the equation that I have for sample standard deviation, remembering that I want n minus 1 because I'm not 100% sure of the value of my mean, lets me calculate the value of the sample standard deviation to be 0.09. Because standard deviation is plus or minus values on the mean, I've rounded this to have the appropriate number of significant figures based on the value of the de collected data. In other words, two decimal places. Finally, finishing this up to make sure that the standard deviation has not only the same number of significant figures as appropriate, but any multiplying factors and units, this gives me, in this case, a standard deviation for my sample of 0.09 times 10 to the minus 4 moles per decimeter cubed per second. We're going to use this standard deviation in later videos, particularly one in the standard error. If you have any questions about this, um, please just ask. If not, look forward to what's coming next.